The Mamaroneck Village Zoning Board denies two properties the right to build and expand. Some cold medication may be hazardous to your health. Students are learning their own secret language at Daniel Warren Elementary School. Can you believe there may be a tax cut in our future? We have an IKEA update and seniors, listen up, Friday just might be your day to play golf. Those stories and more coming up right here on this edition of Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News. Welcome to the Larchmont Marina Community News Show for the week of Thanksgiving, November 2000. I'm Sven Ulmer. And I'm Alicia Myro. Our top story. This year's election day was about two weeks ago. While the presidential elections turned into a long and heatedly discussed matter, most local elections offered very clear results. And here's a brief overview of those results. In the race for the 18th district for the House of Representatives, Republican John Vongles lost to incumbent Democrat Nita Lowy, uh, who was able to secure a big lead. State Senator Susie Oppenheim, a Democrat, was elected to another term, her ninth, in the state Senate by 96% of the votes. And similar results were reported for State Assembly member Democrat Ronald Tochi, who received 96% of the votes too. In the town, Democrat Nancy Seligson was elected after running unopposed for the town board. In the judicial races, former Westchester County Executive Andrew P. P. O'Rourke was successful in his bid for a seat on the state Supreme Court. In the race for an open seat on the Westchester County Court, Democrat Lester Adler was also successful. Republican incumbent Albert J. Emanuele lost to Democrat Anthony A. Scapino, Jr. in the race for Westchester Surrogate Court. The Republicans Martha Sokol McCarty, Philip Trefletti, and Michael Sudano lost their seat. And Pete McConnell. The village board is now completely controlled by the Democrats. Republican Village Justice Roger Searle, who was running unopposed, was elected to a six four year term. <clears throat> Well, the Westchester County Planning Department said the draft environmental impact study of the IKEA furniture store proposed for New Rochelle underestimates the impact of the traffic on nearby neighborhoods. Traffic estimates were based on the IKEA store in Elizabeth, New Jersey, and then shrunk down to match the size of the store proposed for New Rochelle. Tim Miller, whose firm, Tim Miller Associates, prepared the draft environmental study for IKEA, said it is standard for traffic experts to use the size of the store to help estimate the number of cars that will travel there. The County Planning Board also cited the environmental study's failure to provide enough detail on how to treat the stormwater that would run off the roof and parking lots. While well, more than 400 local residents packed the Murray Avenue School Auditorium last week to protest the plan to build the IKEA store. Neighborhood leaders said the traffic would increase noise, congestion, accidents, pollution, and ruin the suburban character of our area. Many of you may have tuned into LMC TV's broadcast on Channel 72 of New Rochelle's public hearing regarding the IKEA proposal. The hearing elicited many reactions regarding the draft environmental impact study or draft EIS, mostly negative. IKEA wants to build a two-story, 308,000 square foot furniture store and about 1,500 parking spaces south of the Fifth Avenue, south of Fifth Avenue on the Mamaroneck border. In order for IKEA to build the store, the 15-acre site across from City Park must be cleared of its existing businesses and homes. IKEA has already bought up much of the neighborhood, and the city is considering using eminent domain to seize property whose owners do not willingly sell. The debate continues, and we will continue to bring you up to date on the latest details. Westchester County Executive Andrew Spano last week released a budget for 2001 with the largest tax cut in county history. The 1.2 billion budget reduces the tax levy by 17 million or 4.8 percent. It is also the first time that taxes would be reduced three years in a row. 
if the budget is adopted, the Spano administration will have slashed the tax levy a total of 7.2 percent or $26.1 million since 1998. The 7.2 percent decrease will have been achieved despite a loss of $55.9 million in state and federal funds, as well as increased mandates. Without these cost shifts, Spano would have reduced taxes by 22 percent. Spano said, quote, I promised to reduce taxes and I have done that despite an increased burden from the state and federal governments of almost 55 million. At the same time, we are investing in the future of our seniors, our children and our environment. We've accomplished all this while securing our long-term financial stability, end of quote. In addition to reducing taxes, the budget holds the line on bus fares and proposes no reductions in bus routes. It also provides funds for quality of life programs and those that protect families and the environment while helping residents who have not fully enjoyed the booming economy. Daycare, anti-smoking initiatives, economic development and programs for the county's growing senior population are among the key items in the budget. The 1.2 billion budget is 2.4 percent larger than last year's, an increase below the current cost of living index. And here are some highlights. Daycare, the 2001 budget, invests $17.8 million in county funding in daycare, a $13.2 million increase over the 2000 budget. The money create 4,647 low-income daycare slots to help families coming off public assistance and to help working families remain self-sufficient. In his 2001 budget, Spanner continues his commitment to the county's anti-tobacco campaign with $2.6 million slated for programs to stop young people from smoking. Other programs funded in the budget include uh, public health, $800,000 are going to add 14 new health department positions to bring mosquito control and surveillance programs in-house. Expanded watershed monitoring and educational outreach to protect the quality of drinking water and increased environmental monitoring at the airport. $300,000 for eight new positions to maintain county parks and golf courses. $450,000 for Chute to Chute, a new playland ride that is expected to pay for itself and to help increase playland attendance. Transportation, an additional $3.4 million for the Department of Transportation to maintain current fares and level of service public safety. $500,000 for a new child sexual abuse investigation team which for the first time will bring together police, child protective services, the district attorney's office and the county attorney's office and the probation and community mental health departments to work on cases. One of the main sources of financing the tax cut in the budget proposal is an increase in sales tax revenues. The account for this, this accounts for 23.2 percent of all revenues, up from 21 percent in this year's budget. Alicia? Well, the Washingtonville Housing Alliance has been working hard to find a way to develop a parcel of land in the village of Mamaroneck. Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News reporter Sharon Levy has a story. What's more important to Mamaroneck Village, affordable housing for new families or parking? The Washington Vilda Housing Alliance would like to build four affordable two-family homes. According to the article in the Journal News, the proposed location is 726 Old White Plains Road. This proposed housing would allow the apartments to be constructed closer to the street than normal and therefore limiting parking. Several people at the zoning board meeting on November 2nd complained that the proposed housing would make traffic conditions worse. Neighbors in the village are concerned that the 16-car garage for the new residents would be too small and in turn decrease parking along the residential streets. No formal decision has been made about whether to build the apartment units. Yet, the Washington Village Housing Alliance Executive Director Ellen Levy explained that the parking for the new residents would be okay with current zoning. The new residents wouldn't need to park on the street. Therefore, it would be enough private parking available. For Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News, I'm Sharon Levy.
Well, and I guess we welcome Sharon Levy back yes. to our news show team after uh, a couple of years she, she's a couple been of, college. A couple of years she's, she's been absent from our show, but a welcome return. Now she's back. And speaking of uh, the Village of Mamernik Zoning Board, they also rejected the expansion plans of the Mamernik Beach and Yacht Club. For all the details, here's Larchmont Mamernik Community News reporter Maura Carlin. Mamernik Beach and Yacht Club cannot double the size of its dining and clubhouse facilities. That's the decision of the Village of Mamernik Zoning Board of Appeals. The board decided last week that the proposed increase in the facilities from nearly 19,000 to about 36,000 square feet would change the use of the club at the foot of South Barry Avenue from marine recreation to commercial. In 1985, clubs on the waterfront, such as Mamaronic Beach and Yacht, were rezoned as marine recreation to prevent residential development and to ensure public access to the sound. Zoning Board Chairman Tony Voza was quoted in the Journal News, a 30-something, 30,000-something 30, square foot dining area. It's hard to justify how that's not an activity that's commonly conducted as a business. Now, the attorney for the club president is Paul Noto, a county legislator and former village mayor, who said he believed the club would scale back its dining hall proposal to accommodate the Zoning Board requirements, but also did not rule out the possibility of a court appeal. Mr. Noto had argued before the Zoning Board of Appeals that the expansion was intended to boost income to the club to attract more members and not increase dues. The proposal also included plans to add a, pet, a tennis court and a winter tennis bubble over four of the courts, to expand both the boathouse for a larger summer day camp and the club manager's house, and to increase parking capacity from 119 to 360 cars. The plan was approved by the village building inspector in September, but was referred to the Zoning Board of Appeals by the planning board, which wasn't sure if a variance was needed. Now, this expansion plan comes on the heels of an aborted attempt last May by the club president, Bernard Rosenshine, to build 54 luxury townhouses on two of the club's 11 acres, which was dropped after intense community opposition. For Larchmont Mamaronek Community News, I'm Maura Carlin. Well, taking the SAT test is a very stressful time in a student's life. To fill us in, here's Larchmont Mamaronek Community News reporter, Glenna Gray. The increased competition to get into the, quote, better, unquote, colleges has become quite stressful for high school students throughout Westchester County. Students are being trained to improve their scores on the SAT exam. The Scholastic Aptitude Test is given every fall for seniors who wish to bring up their grades. Test-taking skills are offered in the private sector as well as in the public schools. The more familiar students are with the exam, the more relaxed they become for the exam. Good luck to all of you. For Larchmont Mamaronek Community News, I'm Glenna Gray. Signing the language of the deaf is being taught to first graders at the Daniel Warren Elementary School in Rye Neck. For more, he's Larchmont Mamaronek Community News reporter, Teresa Dioberto. Allison Billman is a first grade teacher at Daniel Warren Elementary School in Rye Neck. She believes six-year-olds are not meant to be still. If she can give them an excuse to move, it allows them to tune in to what she's doing. What Miss Bellman is doing is teaching her students how to use sign language in a fun way. But more importantly, she is empowering her students in a way that helps them focus on learning. The students are learning to sign by singing and singing to their favorite songs. Pam McWilton's son, Connor, attends Miss Bellman's class and was quoted in the Journal News saying, Connor loves it. I think he loves the feeling of knowing how to do it and being able to teach it to someone else. He enjoys school more this year and focuses better on his schoolwork. End of quote. Another student, Catherine, says she likes signing because it allows her to talk when she's supposed to be quiet. Miss Billman was quoted in the Journal News saying she used basic sign language to reinforce rote skills, like the alphabet and the days of the week. She has been teaching for 12 years. Nine years ago, she got serious about signing because she needed the skills in order to communicate with a student's deaf mother. The students at Daniel Warren Elementary School in Rye Neck are lucky to have a teacher like Allison Billman. For Larchmont Mamarina Community News, I'm Teresa DiRoberto. Well, it's very important that you listen closely to this next story. It could save your life. Ingredients in some cold medication have been linked to stroke risk. Larchmont Mamaronek Community News reporter Maria Severino has the story. 
The Food and Drug Administration is warning consumers to stop taking several cough medicines and diet pills because it contain the ingredient propanolamine or PPA because it increases the risk of stroke, especially in young women. Following a study by Yale University which found that individuals taking products with PPA were found to be at a higher risk of hemorrhagic stroke or bleeding in or around the brain. The risk increases for women between the age group of 18 to 49 and can leave survivors disabled. Risk increases with age and smoking, alcohol consumption, and use of blood thinning medicines. A plan to ban PPA is underway, however, the process is a lengthy one and as a courtesy for the health of consumers, the FDA has asked manufacturers to voluntarily stop selling and making products containing PPA. Consumers are also being asked to avoid taking any products with PPA. Dozens of over-the-counter cough and cold medicines for adults and children, such as Dimetap, Contact, Alka-Seltzer, and Triminic, as well as generic and store brands, are affected. PPA has been in use for more than 50 years, and some in the pharmaceutical field feel that the companies who manufacture products with PPA derive many benefits, and this is why the FDA has not asked these companies outright to stop producing these medicines which contain the product PPA. If anyone needs further information regarding PPA, you may call the following hotline number for assistance, 1-888-INFO-FDA or a direct line, 301-827-4570. For Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News, I'm Maria Severino. Good news for seniors who play golf. Fridays might just be your lucky day. To fill us in, here's Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News reporter and golfer herself, Christina Bolger. This story began last year when the Westchester County Parks Board started counting Friday as a weekend day and charge seniors the weekend rate. The weekday rate for those over 60 is $10 for 18 holes of golf. On weekends, the rate doubles to $20. With the seniors now not playing on Fridays, the other four weekdays became very crowded. People have started to complain and a petition with over 1,500 signatures has been sent to the county urging the board to keep Friday as a weekday. County Executive Andrew Spano, Board Chairman George Latimer, and County Legislator Jim Masano and Vito Pinto are all for granting the seniors their request. Communications Director for the County Executive Susan Tolchin said, We have heard what the seniors have been telling us, but she went on to say that the Parks Board would have to find a way to recoup the $230,000 in lost revenue that changing Friday back to a weekday would cost. One of the solutions was to increase the per round fee by $1 to all golfers. We shall know by next golf season if the seniors get their weekday back. Stay tuned. For Larchmont Mamaron at Community News, I'm Christina Bolger. And that's it for this week's edition of Larchmont Mamaron at Community News. If you want to see this news show again, you can. It's on every weekday night at 7 p.m. We record one show each week, and it's replayed on this channel, LMC TV Channel 71. Or if you want to request to see it, you can call LMC TV after 4 in the afternoon during the week at 698-6808. And ask to see the new show. They'll try to put it on at a time that's convenient for you to watch. And this reminder, this news program is an all-volunteer effort, and we could use a few more volunteers, either behind the scenes or as a reporter. Or maybe you'd like to shoot video. Whatever the case, we need you. In short, if you want to volunteer to help us put this program on, we have something for you to do. Stop by some Thursday night in the LMC TV studios and see how we do what we do. The LMC TV studios are in the Mimanic High School, the Palmer Avenue site, just up the stairs from, across from the landmark Walters Hot Dog Stand. We get things started around 7 p.m. I would love to see you. Also, if you have any comments or suggestions or some video of an event that you would like us to put on this new show, bring it to the studio or write to us at Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News in care of LMC TV, 1 Library Lane, Mamaroneck, New York, 10543. Thanks again for watching Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News. I'm Sven Oehmer. And I'm Alicia Myro. We'll see you next week. And uh, happy Thanksgiving. Yes, you too. Gobble, gobble. <laughs> <laughs> I think I say that every year. Exactly. <laughs>